Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for coming this afternoon. Uh, with me here at the podium is our independent city auditor, Eduardo Luna, our city's chief operating officer, Chris Michelle, council member, Lori Zaff, and Johnny Perkins, our deputy chief operating officer. <coughs> Residents and <coughs> neighbors expect and deserve that the water bills they receive are accurate. That is a quote from one of the two public utilities audits that we are releasing today. And I could not agree more. San Diegans must be able to trust that they are paying for water that they actually used. These audits show that less than one quarter of 1% of bills were issued incorrectly by the department. But percentages don't matter if you were the one that was overbilled. Even one wrong bill is too many. And while nearly every residential customer was accurately billed, these audits found that from meter reading oversight to customer service to communications to billing, changes must be made in how this department operates. So today I am calling for sweeping reforms to the Public Utilities Department changes that I have directed staff to begin implementing immediately. The department needs to rebuild the trust that has been lost. And it starts with implementing each of the 18 recommendations in these reports. I want to thank the public for helping to identify these issues. Your complaints in 2017 and early this year prompted three big actions. First, it launched these audits into the department's billing practices. Council members asked the city auditor, Eduardo Luna, to make this his top priority. And I asked the auditor to expand the scope of his analysis to review smart meter technology. Second, I commissioned a third party utilities expert, West Monroe Partners, to conduct their own independent review of the department. West Monroe did a detailed root cause analysis of billing history, as well as an operational assessment of the department. And third, I directed staff to do their own internal review, including having our performance and analytics department take a detailed look at billing data going back several years. That analysis is ongoing and will be shared with the public soon. Just say, as the former chair of the city's audit committee myself, and someone who championed the creation of the Office of the Independent Auditor, I know that independent audits are essential to good government. They can help us identify areas where we need to make changes and find efficiencies that improve service to the public. <clears throat> Today, we are going to share with you what these investigations found and the recommendations that they made. While each audit had a slightly different focus, they reached similar conclusions. Each identified human error in meter reading and insufficient quality control measures as key areas that the Public Utilities Department needs to fix. Meter readers need to be more accurate. Their supervisors need to be more attentive. And management needs to provide better training and tools to ensure the quality of their work. The audits also showed that customers were returning to pre-drought usage levels and that many people weren't aware of the recent water rate increases or that they were using more water because of the hot weather conditions. Those were the leading causes of folks thinking that they may have been overcharged. But the audits confirmed that the department does have systems in place that generally obtain accurate meter readings and bills customers correctly. They did, however, find a number of operational issues. These issues, when combined together, have caused too many customers to be inconvenienced and left too many San Diegans without enough information to know that their water use had changed. The bottom line is this. These are the things that the Public Utilities Department is responsible for. These are the things that the department will be held 
accountable for. And these are the things that the department must improve. I want to mention smart meters as well. The audits concluded that the implementation of the smart meter program will be an incredibly important step toward removing human error from meter reading and putting real-time water use information into the hands of customers. And while the auditor found that this report that, quote, smart meters did not contribute to bill increases, unquote, the program's success will rely on customers' confidence that the technology is reliable and that the department systems for that technology are sound. That's why at my request, the Independent Auditor's Office is currently conducting a separate and full audit of the smart meter program. We will look forward to that review being completed this fall. And I want to thank all of the folks that have been involved in this process so far, including our city auditor, Eduardo Luna. His team has spent countless hours on this, and the folks at West Monroe. This is not the end of this process. This is the beginning of reform. And going forward, I have directed a review of the entire department, its management structure, processes, and protocols, employee oversight, key performance metrics, and internal controls to prevent fraud, waste, and inefficiencies. We must change the culture of this department. Let me say that again. We must change the culture of this department to consistently deliver the excellent services that San Diegans expect. The department needs these audits, and I wholeheartedly embrace them. These reviews will make the department stronger and help better serve the public. I don't want the Public Utilities Department to just make improvements. I'm insisting that we set the gold standard in terms of quality and customer service. We have to put the public back in public utilities. So going forward, the public will know when reforms are enacted. The public will know if new problems are uncovered. And the public will know the plans to fix them. Now I'd like to invite our independent city auditor, Eduardo Luna, to talk more about his team's audit. Eduardo? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Eduardo Lunas, City Auditor. This is probably one of the most important audits my office has done um, since the creation of the office because it involved fundamental issues of trust involving customers expecting to receive accurate water bills. We spent um, the last several months going through over 2 million water bills, specifically focused on 1.3 million bills issued to single family residents. And we found that the error rate was extremely low given the number of bills that were issued. We did find issues and concerns with how meter readers were conducting their work and overriding management controls. We found improvements that are definitely needed with regards to customer service and outreach. As the mayor indicated, we'll be continuing a second audit focused on AMI smart meter implementation and then a third audit focused on customer service. I'll be happy to answer questions at the end. Thank you, Eduardo. Sir. You can reach the city. Um, Auditor. Uh, Councilmember Lori Zaff chairs the Council's Audit Committee, which of course plays an important role in the oversight of the city's business functions. So I'd invite uh, Councilmember Zaff to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, the audit of the Public Utilities Department will go a very long way in ensuring that the city is accountable to our customers. And audits actually provide an opportunity for the city to uh, better serve the residents by analyzing our strengths, our weaknesses, areas for improvement, and making recommendations that we actually um, need to follow. These separate independent audits have each concluded that there is a lot of work to be done to improve quality control and oversight of the Water Department's internal operations as well as their billing practices. And as chair of the audit committee, I will be asking the Public Utilities Department to provide my committee with regular updates about their progress in implementing each and every recommendation. 
I want to commend uh, the independent auditor and his team for uh, diligent work, a great job. And I would like to thank our Mayor Faulkner for the importance he's put on this issue, uh, not only getting to the bottom of these issues, but actually fixing them. And I, I look forward to these additional audits of the department that will be coming uh, in, the, you know, in the following months. But on a final note, the ratepayers are our customers, and they should only pay for the water they receive. And our customers need to trust that we are billing them properly. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so I think many of you know, we recently hired a new Deputy Chief Operating Officer for Infrastructure and Public Utilities. Johnny Perkins, with our Chief Operating Officer, Chris Michelle, be the people and the individuals that I'm relying on to ensure that these reforms happen and they happen on the time frame that has been outlined. I'd uh, like Johnny Perkins to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Johnny Perkins and I'm the new Deputy Chief Operating Officer for Infrastructure and Public Works. It will be my responsibility to ensure these recommendations are in fact implemented and that our Public Utilities Department becomes the gold standard across the country, both operationally and from a customer service perspective. That is our goal. The mayor, the mayor has made it very clear that under no uncertain terms is this type of performance acceptable. And he expects this to be corrected with reform and changes taking place within the Public Utilities Department. I've been in this position for a little over a week. So I'm looking at all these findings and recommendations with a new perspective and fresh eyes. I certainly have no illusions that this will be easy. But my commitment to the city's ratepayers, to the mayor, to the city council, is that if there's an issue, we're going to own it. If there's a question, we're going to answer it. And if there's a problem, we're going to solve it. The audits we are releasing today are just the beginning. We will continue to do a deep dive review of every area and every aspect of the Public Utilities Department's operations. And we expect more information to come to light that will lead to more changes and critical improvements. And we will be sharing this information with the public on a regular basis. I appreciate and am honored that Mayor Faulkner and the Chief Operating Officer Chris Michelle for putting their trust, their confidence, and their faith in me and my team to ensure that this job gets done. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, uh, thank you. Um, this team is committed to the necessary improvements that PUD's customers are provided the best possible service. That's the priority. Um, happy to answer some questions from the podium and then uh, folks from not only here but from um, um, the department will be available for, for questions one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. You so talked about you. the need to be a change of culture at the water department. How do you change a culture at the water? How would you typify it now and how do you make those changes? Yeah, great question. Uh, it needs to be more open. It needs to be transparent. Well, it needs to have a customer service focus. That's not happening now. Uh, and that's what these audits have revealed. Uh, and in the internal reviews that we have done, of course, that needs to change. It needs to be a, a forward-facing customer service environment. So when you know that you call, you're going to get your call answered. You know that there's going to be somebody on the phone that's going to help you with your problem and somebody on the phone who's going to be empowered to fix it. Um, that's the changes that we're going to need to have. Mr. Perkins, so many customers that we've talked to said that they have been made to feel like fools by the department when they call, that they didn't, they used all this water that they were told that, uh, you know, they didn't, that they were told they didn't use, and they said, you know, the water department told them they did use them. Do you feel like the department owes them an apology for making them feel like insignificant? I think one of the things that we're going to look at as part of the mayor's directive to look at our management structure, our internal controls, our process and protocols, and our employee oversight will include our customer service representatives and our customer service agents in terms of how do we answer the phone? How do we communicate with a customer? How do we ensure that the resolution is done in a timely manner and is sufficient and that we want to make sure that the customer experience exceeds expectations? We will take those calls one at a time and ensure that those issues get addressed 
in a timely manner and an appropriate resolution. That's an important question. I think any rate payer that feels insignificant, regardless of the situation, that's wrong. And that's the culture that we have to change. That is not acceptable. You wouldn't see that at a Nordstrom's. You wouldn't see that in an Apple store. And our goal is you never see that here at the City of San Diego Public Utilities Department, because that is what the mayor has shared with us. And that's what we'll do. So in the report, I mentioned these 10 meter readers that were um, responsible for over 11,000 of the misreads or the ones that were flagged. But it doesn't mention the, the entire department, the 36 meter readers in all. Do we have numbers on how many were flagged from the whole third, all 36? And then, I mean, the, the breakdown doesn't really add up as far as why things, some things were, were put in and other things weren't. We don't have those numbers precisely, but that's part of the internal review that we're going to be doing in terms of looking at our meter reading operation to look at our employees. You know, one of the things that we want to correct is there's a, some human error that's going on. So the type of training that we're going to deploy, the type of expectations that we're going to deploy, the type of uh, meter auditing, auditing of meter routes, see how many uh, meters should be read along each route. We're going to be looking at all those individual factors to ensure that we're doing this in a, in a manner that is best practices for this department. So then also the report says the AMI was not a, a significant uh, contributor to this, but then there's an audit specifically for AMI. What's the need if it's not specifically a, an issue? Well, I, I think one of the things, we've just completed a pilot project with smart meters, which is you're referring to AMI, and right now we're in the process of evaluating and assessing that pilot project to see how successful it was. There's been some uh, things that we need to look at in terms of evaluating the technology. But if you look at Wes Monroe, who's an expert in water policy and meter reading best practices, they've suggested that we accelerate the deployment of smart meters. But before we do that, we need to look at our pilot project to see have we been ensuring that those uh, those units are operating according to how they were intended to function for our rate prayers to ensure that we take out the human error. And the last one, the, the glitch that was admitted by the Public Utilities Department, or the Public Works Department. What about the glitch and why wasn't that mentioned? 36, 000, over 36,000 meters, right, were, were supposedly there is a glitch. So wh where is that at and why isn't that part of the explanation? I think as part of our internal review, again, is since we've just finished the pilot project uh, on our smart meters, we're evaluating every factor, every asset of the technology, how the information was communicated back to our, our billing and customer service, and how that information is utilized uh, on the go forward to assist and support the customer. Mayor. Uh, yes, Carlos. There's a lot of technical issues and, and technical situations in this one, but the, the mm -hmm. more important part is in the apology that the, probably the people is waiting for, it wouldn't be just not to say, I'm sorry, but, but the job that you guys are doing, but what would it be from now on for the customer when they see a bill that is increased and make a phone call, are they going to get a direct response? Are they going to get a timely manner response? Would they feel comfortable with that? Are they going to be, like you said, that we're a real customer service in order to do well, that? That's, that's the point, Carlos, and, and that's, a, that's a great, um, that, that is the, the thrust of all of this when it comes to customer service. When somebody is calling the department, they're calling because they have a legitimate concern. They need to be treated with that legitimacy. They need to be treated with respect. They need to be treated with dignity. And they need to have somebody on the other part of that line that's going to walk them through give them the information they need. If they don't have the information, say, I'll get back to you and make sure you're getting back to you. Um, that is, when I look at the, uh, the audit and the several, all of the recommendations which were um, agreed to, one of the biggest ones that, that, that jumped out as me was, you have to ensure that the people are calling are, are getting treated with respect. That's gonna change. It's gonna be a phone number where they can call. Yes. But, and, and a big number. Yeah, and part of, and, and again, part of why uh, the, the auditor's deep dive was so important, all this on the, on the billing practices, is to look at the information that's being communicated, how it's being communicated. And again, that was a, uh, that was a focus on the audit because as you had some of these rate increases, as you had other things that were coming up, that was not sufficiently communicated in advance to people. You want to give people the information. The, the rule should be you over-communicate. That will be the future of this department. 
Mayor, yes, you, you mentioned that one quarter or one percent of the complaints were actually a result of overbuilding. So you're saying that more than 99 percent of the complaints were unfounded. How, how do you explain that to people who actually went to meetings with their bills and complained and wanted to, some research yeah. done? How do you, I mean, how did you come up with that number? It's a damn good batting average. <laughs> so there's a chart right here where, where you, you can see that uh, the, the, the auditor used in terms of their assessment and overview where there's 1.3 million bills that that were uh, that were that were billed and issued, and and one of the things that we're where we did at the at, at the department is that uh, we need to communicate better. But we flagged 57,000 uh, potential billing issues, and so we looked at those prior to any communication from the customer. And what what we were able to do is correct about 18,000 of those, which is about 1.7 percent before the bills went out, and through our internal system. Unfortunately, we missed 2,750, which is less than 1%. But you know what? Even if that number was one, that's one too many. That's one too many. And we need to communicate with the customers going forward. When we're looking at their bill, we need to communicate with them and let them know, hey, we're looking at your bill because of these various factors that we, we've determined and let them know after we've resolved that, what we found and what the resolution was. But that, that less than 1%, our goal is to get that to zero. And can that be achieved? Yes, it can, with greater, tighter controls, respect with the customer, listening to a customer when they call in and addressing their questions. Forgive me, but it kind of, it's mind-boggling that you have the personnel to go over every, all these bills. How did you do that? If physically went through every bill, compared it to the readings, or how, did, how is that done? Ms. Hurley, I'm going to invite Sine Pickney, who is our lead auditor on the project, to answer that question. Can you repeat your question for me, please? How did you physically conduct the investigation or survey all these bills, compare them to the actual readings, and then come up with the numbers? It just seems like it was an, an incredible task to complete. So um, I guess it's a two-part answer. So first, um, we looked at their implausible review process. So that implausible review process showed us for calendar year 2017, the number of bills that were um, handed out in, 20, in calendar year 2017, which ones were flagged as possible, as needing possible corrections. And then from that, there's another report that we can run um, that was called a rebill report. That rebill report is the report that told us how many of those bills that were actually flagged ended up being corrected. So that's where we get to that 2750. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm going to do one more sure. question that would be available for one more. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Uh, of those uh, 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 complaints, how, how many of them have not been resolved where you got s some way I have record uh, bills, but how many I'm have still not been? for the technical part of that. Yeah. Approximately 80% of the bills have been resolved today. We're still working through some of the other issues to make sure those get resolved quickly. And so by number, how many would those unresolved bills be? I'm going to defer to... Uh, Leanne Jones to let me know how many exactly we'll that the, but you know what sir we can probably get that to you so let me make sure I have the number 100% accurate okay, before I give that to you and I'll make sure we do okay, no, thank, we'll you. Do one -on -one. Right, thank you uh, thank you thank you everybody